Hi. With 4.5 million followers on TikTok and 1.2 million followers on Instagram, I think it's time to move on. So how do you do that? Basically over the last year, I've been trying to read as many books as possible on how to become a better content creator while also outputting at least five pieces of content every week. So here are 10 books that I've read over the past year to help myself become a better content creator. If you like this video, please like this video and consider leaving a comment for other content creator books that I should read or creativity books I should read and also consider subscribing. These books aren't ranked in any way, but out of about 20 that I've read over the past year, these are my top 10. I thought were most helpful. So this all started because I saw this Colin and Samir video. People talking about their favorite books and it's always like a stack of books and then them in the middle. It's generally like, I read a hundred books in one month. So here's what I learned. And since then, I've really been trying over this past year to become a better content creator, not just on YouTube, but everywhere. Number one, The E-Myth Revisited. This book goes into why the E-Myth or entrepreneurship is a total lie. Now, spoiler warning for pretty much all of these books, but at the end of the book, he talks about how small business owners shouldn't be focusing on the one business and hiring for the one business to succeed and make that one business grow, but instead build out a process so you can basically franchise your businesses. So for me, it would be building a workflow, building a content calendar, building out what I need from a team member in order for that team member to train other team members. And as I say that, it kind of sounds like an MLM, but it's not, I swear, it's not an MLM. Number two, at your best. This book is basically about creating the time frames that work best for you. So green, yellow, and red zones. For example, my green zone is from 10 a.m. usually to 2 p.m. during the day. My yellow zones are just outside of that, and then my red zones are just outside of that. So during the green zone time, I would do things that I love doing, like editing, working on videos, learning about making videos. Um, and then my yellow zones, I tend to sort of like work out or do tasks that might take a little bit of creativity, but don't really need that much work. And then in my red zones, I just watch TV or send a single email because that's what red zone deserves. <laughs> Number three, expert secrets. I accidentally found this book when I was watching a Think Media interview from VidCon. So I started when I was nine years old, my first YouTube video ever, 2010. Jade mentioned Russell Brunson and she was the only one in like a month of me looking for different books to read that mentioned him. This first book is more like a workbook mentality one. So if even if you don't do that though, it has a lot of like great perspective on how to succeed in sort of this finding your audience realm. Um, I actually have all three of them up here and they're really interesting. They're great for referencing if I ever have a question and just sort of want to flip through. Number four, start with the why. A massive part of my search has been finding the why I'm a content creator because I, I actually don't really know. This book helps me connect with other success stories that we all sort of know. After a long time of searching, I think I'm actually pretty close to finding my why, but my wife tends to think that it's just because I like doing it and it's a nice creative expression. Um, and I think she might be right. Number five, buy back your time. <laughs> the biggest thing that I got from this book was at the end of it, which was if you can get an assistant to delegate any of these tasks that you don't like doing, get the assistant to do it. Number six, the YouTube formula. There are so many books about how to be a good YouTuber, but this one written by Daryl Eves with a foreword by none other than Mr. Beast, Jimmy Donaldson himself, is the one that I think most people pull from in order to create all of the other ones. This book actually has a lot of similarities between Russell Brunson, so I think that they're friends. Like truly, I think that they're like actually colleagues. I did take the very expensive Channel Jumpstart course, and as Dara would say, I can tell you it is super helpful, if nothing else, just to learn how to be a student of YouTube, like spreadsheets, like researching, that kind of thing. Like that to me was sort of like an invaluable part of the process. Number seven, Time Magic. This is another time management book. I, again, have a serious problem with time management. And it's actually written by two wonderful Aussies that are super into meditation. This book gives you a lot of tools on how to like slow down time. And I think that's so important because time is literally the most valuable asset we have. And this book also gives you tools on how to reorganize to-do lists. So this one matched with At Your Best has helped me a lot to keep making videos like this one. Number eight, Atomic Habits. 
In my experience, this book is actually talked about a lot in many different circles. A lot of these books focus on the short term helping out the immediate, but this book actually focuses on the short term helping out the long, long, long term. For example, if you want to go running every single morning and be a runner every single morning at 6 a.m., the likelihood of you doing that without ever doing it is very low. But if you want to be a runner, maybe just start with putting on your shoes every morning. From there, go for a walk outside for 10 minutes, maybe less, and build on that until you gain 1% every single day. All of a sudden, you're running three miles in the morning. This book really helped me realign what my daily goals should be. Like I shouldn't be trying to make six videos on YouTube every week, but maybe I can make one video on YouTube every week. For nine, the creative act. Rick Rubin, the guy who is a music producer and famously hates shoes, wrote a book about how he creates, and it's fantastic. There are really great things in this book, but there are two things that I really took away from it. Number one is put yourself in situations that are otherwise not that comfortable to actually create in, because let's say if you write really fast for an hour and you're used to that, that's something you're used to, but if you slow down and just write really slow, the creative juices will just begin to flow. Really interesting. Number two, take notes through the entire process. The idea is the beginning and the finished product is when it's over, but everywhere in between there, there are so many different iterations and there's a lot of times for notes and thoughts and that is where some of your best ideas will come from because you can just flip through them and say, oh yeah, that one, let's add it to the finished product. Number 10, unleashing the idea virus. This one has a lot of things that actually I think Colin and Samir took a few of them and they were the one that recommended this book too. But this one for me was all about focusing on finding your audience. I'm still on that path, but I really do enjoy that this book has a lot of pages dedicated to it. So I can go back to it anytime I need to. <laughs> so I hope this list has been very helpful to you to become a better content creator. I know it has helped me. In the comments down below, please let me know any other books that I should probably read. And if you like this video, like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Oh, if you wanna know what's happening with the cicadas this year, click here. Thanks for watching everyone.